guys, this is Ashley back with another video. Before we get into the video, like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you subscribe to my second channel, so T Ash Miracle. Link will be in the description. And we're about to get into some things. So let's start off with Nicki Minaj because there has been reports that Nicki Minaj is out here searching for a management team. Variety reports that Melissa Ruderman, who allegedly used to work for Rock Nation, Okay, by the way, um, took a meeting with Nicki Minaj and they have discussed, you know, doing a partnership, both Nicki Minaj's team and um, Ruderman said they have not partnered with Nicki Minaj yet, but they did have a meeting. Now, Melissa works for Range Media Partners and their roster includes Jack Harlow, Justin Tranter, Corday Wale. Whatever happened to Wale? He fell off. But anyway, um, Nova Wave and others, okay? So I'm not really impressed with this roster. And their biggest star currently is the Queen of Christmas, which I'm not really impressed with because, you know, she only popping during Christmas time, okay? No shade to Miss Mariah. But with that being said, um... You know, I'm glad that she did not sign to this management company because I'm not really impressed with the roster. You know, no shade. I mean, most of those people are not really popping. A Jack Carlo popping, but he's the one that really makes the most noise. Okay. Um, you know, Miss Mariah, the icon, um, you know, the Queen of Christmas, she made noise, but only during Christmas time. You know, she has went away since the new year. No shade. I'm not really shocked that, you know, Nikki is looking for management. I know she wants to have a good rollout for the fifth thing thing. Even though I do feel like she was good at managing herself, I do feel like it would be better or easier for her, being that she is a mother um, and a wife, that, you know, she might need some help, okay? Because she can't do everything. Um, I know she said last year that she was doing her own management company and um, her own label. So I'm not really shocked that she might have switched gears in regards to that. I have did a reading on that um, last year. You guys can check that out. Even though I think that she did a good job with managing herself last year, um, I do feel like she needs some help, okay? Um, in regards to like just being on time for shows, for festivals, I think she needs somebody to be on top of her for that. I would love to see Nikki do more award show performances too, not just festivals. You know, go to the award shows that, you know, show you love, like the EMAs and the AMAs. You know, it don't always have to be, you know, the scammies, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, the EBT awards. We don't really care about them. But the award shows that show her love year after year, I do feel like she should attend them or at least perform or do something. You know, I feel like we need to see Nikki out and about a little bit more other than at festivals. I would love that. And to be quite honest, I think Nikki needs to go back to Saul XO. I mean, he helped her get radio. He was the main advocate of her getting radio. He has pull at getting um, artists playlisting and radio. That's why Doja and The Weeknd, who he manages, have Spotify deals, okay? I think she needs to go back over to Saul, no shade, and call it the day. I understand he manages the ops, Partisan Fontaine, um, but at the end of the day, he's a really good manager. But maybe Nikki was worried about how is he going to manage Doja and Nikki at the same time. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, they both got albums coming out in 2023. So let me know how you guys feel about it. I think she need to go back to Saul because Saul was a very good manager. Moving on to Doja Cat. Um, it seems to me that the industry is really trying to force scratch off down our throats. Okay. I'm looking at the Coachella performances, um, you know, for 2023 and I'm not really impressed. I mean, I think the headliners are the only ones really going to make the most noise. And, um, you know, Cali Uchis is on there and I like her, but I didn't really care for anybody else performing except for the headliners. And the only headliner I cared about was Frank Ocean, but they got scratch off performing at Coachella and not Doja Cat. 
and Doja got an album coming out and Scratch Off's last four singles flopped. Like, come on. Don't y'all see the buffoonery that's going on around here? I mean, how is Scratch Off performing at Coachella and she not really popping like that? They got Scratch Off, Flo Millie, and I like Flo Millie, um, but they should have had Doja Cat performing. No shade. I think that was a snub, in my opinion. Maybe she said no, because I know Rihanna declined. So, you know, maybe she was like, no, nah, I don't want to. But at the end of the day, Scratch Off should not be performing at no damn Coachella when the last four singles flopped. That's ridiculous. Uh-oh, your favorite power couple, 11 Faces and Off the Cheat, got a McDonald's Super Bowl commercial coming out for Valentine's Day. The known criminal and serial cheater are coming hard for the next era. My whole thing is, why them? All the celebrity couples in the world, and you choose the worst one. <laughs> I mean, no shade, but... Who wants to look up to Cardi B and Off to Cheat um, as a Valentine's Day couple? They should have got like Sierra and Russell Wilson. I would prefer that. Like, why Off to Cheat and Criminal B? I don't get that. That's a weird couple to choose for the Valentine's Day commercial. But maybe they thought it was going to cause a lot of controversy. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, controversy is good in Holly Weird. Poor SZA. I mean, every day she gets sabotaged. It's really sad. So um, the music video for Kill Bill came out last night and it wasn't supposed to. SZA actually came out and tweeted, LMFAO is going back up shortly. Just everyone act surprised when it does, please. Because they had taken it down for a few hours and they put it back up because it's like, what's the point? And then she said, LMFAO, okay, we live. Kill Bill music video out. So RCA the colorist or somebody at Scissors team is sabotaging her yet again. I mean, how do you accidentally put out a music video? Then you had to take it down and put it back up because it, you might as well. Now, the music video was fire. I will give um, Scissor her tens. The music video was completely fire. Um, I don't think Vivica Fox was needed, but besides that, you know, the music video was really good. I liked it. Rihanna um, lost at the Golden Globes for Best Original Song, um, and I honestly don't think she deserved to win. Lift Me Down was not Golden Globes worthy, okay? No shade. Lift Me Down is not um, Oscar worthy either, okay? Maybe it could win an EBT award or something. But at the end of the day, I don't feel bad that she lost. Everybody was like, oh, Rihanna was snubbed. Rihanna was snubbed. Not really. She looked amazing, though. She looked fire. Best dress. Um, you know, ASAP the colorist looked a little dusty. But, you know, she looked amazing, but she did not deserve to win. Hopefully she go to the EBT Awards and accept, you know, best original song, you know, at that award show where it belongs. Now Zendaya did win, you know, the new it girl, the new fave in the industry. Zendaya won for um, best performance by an actress in a television series drama. And that's probably for Euphoria. Um, and I agree. Zendaya is phenomenal in Euphoria. And I do think that Zendaya is talented. OK, um, I think people need to, you know, stop hating on Zendaya and give her her props. OK, because she is a good actress, you know, from everything I've seen from her. OK, um, so well deserved congratulations to Zendaya and all the other, you know, people that have won. Now, what I thought was kind of corny about the Golden Globes is that they still telling Will Smith jokes. To me, it seems like Eddie Murphy a little bit too old to be trying to fit in and tell Will Smith jokes. It was kind of corny. I didn't really laugh. No shade. I didn't find it to be funny because at the end of the day, I mean, that happened last year. Y'all don't got nothing original. They going to nail this Will Smith slapping Chris Rock thing to the ground. I mean, it's, it's getting old and redundant. I'm not impressed. Then last but not least... Queen B is top 10 on Billboard Cuff It. It looks like she got another hit on her hands. 
Cuff It actually grew on me. At first, that wasn't really a song that I would listen to on Renaissance, but I actually do like the song. Now, do I listen to it all the time? No, my fave is still Alien Superstar or Heated. Um, but at the end of the day, I got to give um, Queen Bee her props for being top 10 with no music video, no promotion. Like That's what you call power. Okay, but I still think that it was a missed opportunity to not put out the music videos. Okay, especially since allegedly she had filmed at one of Prince's houses. Okay, Prince the Icon. So the fact that you went and filmed at Prince House and you didn't even put the music video out, that was just a waste of time and money. I'm sure that wasn't free. But anyway, let me know how you guys feel about it. Like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you guys check out my Patreon. Link will be in the description. I got some new videos over there. And um, I will see you guys in the next video. Have an amazing day.